today we have two recipes. We're back for another episode of Food for Dudes. And Dudettes. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life, and I am back with my husband Daryl in the kitchen for another episode of Food for Dudes. Daryl has the main course in today's video, and I have the side dish. So hubby, what's your recipe? Well, our entree is going to be peppered beef ribeye roast with a sour cream sauce. That sour cream sauce was so good. And then I used a good old Pinterest and I found a super easy au gratin potato. I thought that would be really, really good, especially since we're sticking with the food for dudes. So it's supposed to be more simplistic. So I literally found the easiest of au gratin potatoes and it was really, really good. So I'm gonna bring you down to the counter. I'm gonna turn the mic over to the hubs and I'm gonna let him walk you through his recipe and then I'll come back and share with you mine all right we have all our ingredients here so you can see we're making the peppered beef ribeye roast today and here's your ingredients if you'd like to pause and screenshot it and for our sour cream sauce on the side now this recipe calls for ribeye roast well in these hard times we had to kind of go with what we could get so my wife was able to get some nice pieces of prime rib for the steak, we need peppercorn, Dijon mustard, and garlic cloves. And we're using a grinder for our peppercorn. And these are our ingredients for the sour cream sauce. Sugar, horseradish, sour cream, and balsamic. It says to use vinegar, but we're using a glaze. We're starting with our sour cream sauce since that needs time to refrigerate. For the sauce, we're using 3 quarters cup of sour cream and 2 tablespoons of prepared horseradish. And you see how prepared I am with only having a quarter cup and a tablespoon that won't fit in the jar. I had to pop in here quickly because did you guys notice how Daryl showed the camera the tablespoon before even attempting to put it in the jar? And then now once he figured out that it didn't fit he was almost confused like where do I put it and what do I do and I loved watching that while editing because you can see how far he's come and how much better he'll get and how much better these episodes will get the more that he learns as he goes and I'm back now that I've figured out my tablespoons and quarter cups and all that jazz and gotten the second one finally in the bowl we're ready to move on to the next part for the sauce and another great idea, I did say that we are using balsamic glaze instead of balsamic vinegar. Well, that took a while to squeeze out. And then the last part, which is the only thing that went swimmingly, was our half a teaspoon of sugar to make the medicine go down. And now it's whisking time. And after the tablespoon debacle, I wish it was whiskey time. And now we set it in the fridge to chill. For the amateurs, I suggest using minced garlic, but if you have whole, then cut the ends off of a piece, lay it flat, put the knife over the top of it, and pound down to basically smash your garlic flat. After that, you will be able to line it up and use a slight chopping motion and mince it up yourself. I am popping back in for a second. I do have to admit, my husband has some serious knife skills, but while he was chopping it, he was all, oh, you're not gonna have to speed this up because this is real action, baby. Now we take our finely chopped garlic and add the mustard to it, and then we whisk it. Whisk it real good. We go from here to the grill where we will baste our steaks. We decided to baste one side and then add it onto the grill and then we are going to baste the other side while it's on the grill and add our peppercorns. The flame was a little low so I added some charcoal and moved the steaks over to the side for more of an indirect cooking. I left them down for about five to seven minutes. We added our next layer of sauce, our peppercorn, and flipped our steaks. Mm -hmm. 
I'd just like to say that I hate cooking with charcoal. I don't know how they did it in the past. It's just so inconsistent. But I believe with a little stoking and poking of the fire, I was able to finally get the steaks looking just how I wanted them to. And now back to the house, and I will pass the cooking baton on to the doodad. All right, you guys, so now we're on to our side dish. And like I mentioned before, I chose off of Pinterest a super easy man's, so to say, version of an au gratin potato. I really wanted to try an au gratin. I feel like we're getting stuck in a rut with our side dishes. So one of the things that it calls for is for you to evenly slice your potato. Now, lucky for me, I will give my husband another compliment in saying that he really does some have some serious knife skills. Look at the way that he cut these potatoes. Like they are perfectly cut and just the way that we would need for an au gratin. So if you are not lucky enough to have a Daryl, you certainly can use a mandolin slicer or if you have a food processor, it does have a slicer you can go ahead and use that if you don't have either one of those things and you have to use a knife just try and cut your potatoes as evenly as possible so we need a six of those we need three tablespoons of butter three tablespoons of flour a quarter cup of a diced onion we need a salt and a pepper it called for milk but I went ahead and chose heavy cream and then it also called for two cups of shredded cheese so I'm using one cup of mozzarella and one cup of a extra sharp cheddar one suggested ingredient that i did not show you was some cooking spray so we're going to go ahead and use the cooking spray on the bottom of a 13 by 9 pan and then we're going to throw our butter into the saucepan and once it gets melty we will add our flour and we'll just go ahead and whisk that together essentially creating a roux now once that's good and creamy i'm going to grind some salt and some pepper and then just whisk that through once that's all incorporated then then we're going to add our heavy cream again you can use milk here but i chose to use heavy cream and then i added a little bit at a time so your milk or your heavy cream that's going to be cold and you don't want to shock that roux you want it to thicken as you work it in so i added about a half a cup at a time whisked it through until i had used all two cups and then you're going to leave it on the stove for a slow boil for maybe like five to seven minutes you want it to get good and thick and start creating a sauce for your potatoes. Once it reaches that consistency, we're gonna go ahead and mix in our quarter cup of diced onion. And once that's mixed through, now we're gonna add in our shredded cheese. And this just made such a yummy and super easy cheese sauce. It definitely gave me the vibes of like a beer cheese, the kind of cheese you would serve like in a pub with a really salty, fresh baked pretzel. It smelled so good. It tasted so good and you're just going to pull it off the stove and you're going to add in your slices of potato and you're just going to mix that until pretty much as much as possible that every potato is cooked through. I mean, I probably should have dropped every potato in individually so that none of them were stuck together. But once you mix it through as much as you can, you're going to pull your 13 by 9 back and you're going to dump your potato mixture into that that pan and you're just going to smooth it out so that it's even as possible it's potatoes so you really want them to cook as evenly as possible it's always hard to get potatoes to be cooked thoroughly all the way through now once you've smoothed it out we're going to go ahead and add tin foil to the top these actually take a very long time to cook it was easier and quicker to prepare them than it was obviously for them to go into the oven so for the first hour at 350 degrees we're going to cook it covered then we're going to take it out of the oven and we're going to remove that tin foil you can see now that the potatoes are pretty much cooked through and the sauce is starting to thicken but now you need to give it that extra 30 minutes to really kind of congeal everything together so i actually cooked it for like another 40 minutes and i probably should have put it on broil it started to turn brown up top but i really like when it gets really brown and crispy so i probably should have turned it on broil but you can see how yummy these potatoes came out they were so so delicious the key to this however though is definitely giving them time to cool when something's hot it just thins out 
by nature. So if you really want that thicker sense of potato, you really wanna give them that option to cool. But the au gratin potatoes paired with that steak, even if you don't like mustard, you guys, do not be deterred by the steak because you did not taste the mustard. It just added such a yummy flavor. We use that Chef Chamois garlic butter and put a little dollop on the top of that steak while it was still hot, but you guys, the star of the plate is this sour cream sauce. I love horseradish and the tart and the sweet of that balsamic vinegar mixed in with that horseradish and the sour cream was so delicious. And like I said, the potatoes came out good. This really was a awesome dinner, but I would like to thank my husband for coming up and stepping up and doing another episode with me. And hey guys, I'd like to thank my wife for giving me this opportunity to showcase my skills and lack thereof skills on cooking and especially her little jabs that she gives during this really adds a fun little time to it. I love you so. Thank you all guys. And that's it for another episode guys. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. We love you all so much and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.